How We Make Movies is brought to you by Microsoft Surface, Assimilate, Azo, Moviola, and Canon Hollywood. It's shot in front of a live audience in Los Angeles and hosted by the film collective We Make Movies. How 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 do you like maintain a relationship and a family and you know well, it was, life? And it was weekends and, and it was only a couple. It was like yeah. five weekends, so it wasn't terrible. That's and I insane. saw her during the weekday. Um, hours though. Yeah, and 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 then you know again then trying to sleep in a little bit, but you're really it's not like you're suddenly on nights for weeks you know and okay. you're like okay i can get used to it it was like and so i there were a couple uh couple mondays where i missed work uh because we'd <laughs> shoot in this sunday but i think um just going back to, to make sure i cover off on some things it's um you know it was really uh a really pro a process just back to the writing really quick it was really a process of basically knowing what i had right like robert rodriguez talks about this writing what you have and working that in. So I knew I could probably get a house. I knew I could rent a hotel room. I knew I could buy tickets to San Francisco. Um, I knew I could, uh, um, you know, I know I could probably find locations on the street. I knew I had a motorcycle. And so I had all these elements. And if I didn't, then we'd go back and we'd change, tweak it and change it in the script. And um, I knew I had actors that spoke French. And that all kind of just got wrapped up in, in being very easy with the sense of saying, I'm going to be really loose with this and kind of like let the story exist on its own. When I wrote the first draft, I was very unsure about whether it worked, but I gave it out to people and they came back and said, this would be great. In fact, my producer, Travis Oberlander, was like, listen, I probably could have given you some notes, but at the end of the day, it felt like it would have probably ruined the story and it would have ruined the organic nature of it, mm -hmm. you know? And so for some reason, it's hard for me to say, but for some reason it just connects with people. I think what we really did a good job with was just creating these three-dimensional characters, letting them have lives that extend beyond the beginning and end of your film, mm -hmm. and talk about ideas that resonate with the audience in some way. Ideas of the future and, and being held down by a job you don't want, and decisions on whether the person you're with is really the person you want to be with. And a lot of things that are wrapped up in sort of our culture right now in terms of like the millennial generation and where they are and, and a lot of people sort of refiguring out their lives. Mm -hmm. And I think that's maybe why it connects to people to some degree. Yeah. And the other thing that made it really easy was I just felt like the script was really solid and I felt like the actors were doing a great job. And we basically were in a position where we could show up, turn on a couple lights and start shooting. So all of our days, even though I was shooting you know, starting at eight after a long work day, all of our days were under eight hours. And um, that's because basically we shot up and within a half hour of getting there, you know, we were, we were filming. And, and we just rolled through and we shot tons of coverage. We shot a lot of coverage. And how us. many days did you shoot all together? Uh, probably about 11 days. So it's still like under what most people spend shooting. Right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was like very, and, and we probably could have shot longer, but mm -hmm. because we basically did it for such a low amount of money that it didn't really matter. Like right. we could have gone another weekend if we wanted to, but it ended up working out.